I'm uh, Eric Millsness, UC Irvine. I'm going to <coughs> discuss uh, some proge progress in a long-standing research project, uh, set of projects that we've had in building uh, languages for biological modeling. And um, many of them, if not most of them, are based on computer algebra in general and uh, Mathematica in particular. <coughs> and this is joint, joint work with a bunch of people, including <coughs> my uh, PhD students, uh, Todd Johnson and David Orendorf and Guy Josephan, and my longstanding collaborator, Bruce Shapiro. <coughs> so, uh, in biological modeling, as was mentioned in the previous talk, we've got uh, <coughs> just a, a, a very uh, big challenge, a lot of things, a lot of things going on to model, and you can kind of classify the different processes by what scale they happen at, which I've done, oops, which I've uh, tried to do here. Um, most obviously, we might, might like to model things at the level of cells, the basic unit of life, and uh, base those models on uh, <coughs> harder sciences of uh, chemistry and physics at a smaller scale, and then extrapolate upwards to things that many biologists are interested in, including development. And in fact, there are many scales, but these are the ones that I'm going to talk about um, today. Here's a, a simple example of a uh, bio-inspired model, let's say. It's not a, really a biological model, but here's a reaction network in which molecule A can be created or destroyed with uh, forward and reverse reaction rates. Um, A's and B's can combine. Um, or be converted, and this, and furthermore, they can both diffuse with <coughs> their own uh, diffusion rates. And this is uh, the uh, well-known Brusselator model. And uh, one of our, uh, so our basic uh, package is called uh, Mathematica package is called Cellerator, <coughs> and Cellzilla is built on top of that. Um, by, and here's a new paper on it. Uh, Bruce Shapiro took the lead on this, <coughs> and here's some of the various. Uh, behaviors that you can get. This kind of model is a reaction diffusion model, um, reactions and diffusions, and it goes back to, uh, most famously, to Turing, 1952. Uh, <coughs> he wrote a paper on um, <coughs> morphogenesis, and here's one of his uh, figures. In fact, um, there's a Cellzilla uh, model file also that reproduces this work. And this kind of model was also greatly advanced by Hans Meinhardt. Here's another example of a, a sort of reaction diffusion model in which the reaction part of it is actually an analog Hopfield style neural network designed to model gene regulation networks. And this was uh, our work with uh, John Reinitz and Dave Sharp <coughs> originally for this equation. And then here Reinitz and Sharp went ahead and uh, applied it to the famous uh, even skip gene in, in Drosophila, uh, data and model. Um, there are other mechanisms of morphogenesis besides uh, reaction diffusion. For example, you can have receptor ligand spatial, spatial interactions instead of diff diffusion. <coughs> and in the case of the plant uh, modeling that we've spent a long time on, there's a, a crucial uh, growth, growth hormone called auxin, which has a private circulatory system just for auxin, and that gives you another kind of spatial model. It's required to explain the patterning of new buds for, buds for new leaves and flowers in uh, all of the terrestrial land plants. Furthermore, biomechanics is becoming important, uh, and we can expect to see biomechanics integrated into these kinds of modeling languages. So here's a, a, a model, that, a real model, of uh, the expression of a key gene called Wuschel right at the very middle of this spray of flowers. There's a tiny group of a couple hundred cells that actually does the pattern formation for, that gives rise to the um, <coughs> patterns of leaves and branches. And this is a, a key gene called Wuschel that sets the origin of coordinates, if you like, for uh, this pattern formation system. <coughs> and uh, here is a model that consists entirely of reactions. Some of them are gene regulation networks, like I just showed you. Some of them are chemical reactions. Here's the brusselator stuck inside there. Um, 
and some of them are uh, diffusion reactions, all implemented at the cellular scale, and running on a, on a template of a real image derived from a, a real uh, a 3D microscopy of a plant. You can see this model giving rise to the peak of Wuschel at the right place. And uh, furthermore, if you zap it with a laser for real, then you, in both the lab and the model, you get similar answers. That's shown here in an updated version of this model. Now you can see the reactions in a little bit more detail, <clears throat> um, including the gene regulation networks for, for Wuschel and several other players. And now the model incorporates growth. So you can have a cell that grows. So we, we have a sort of mechanical model with pressures and springs for the growth. And also cells can divide according to the rule suggested by Herrera, Herrera in the 1860s. Uh, in a stochastic way. So now this is a reaction style model that has entities reacting at both the molecular and the cellular scale and they're related to each other in the right way. <clears throat> so I, I, uh, the, from these models, from models expressed in this kind of language, the system internally generates the right set of differential equations, again using Mathematica, and other sto stochastic processes like uh, stochastic cell division. <clears throat> and um, and so you don't have to worry about making sure your, your ODEs satisfy uh, um, conservation of mass and things like that. Uh, as long as you correctly express your hypothesis at this higher level, you'll get uh, the simulations of the model that you, you intended. So I mentioned this is all built on top of, of Celerator, and there's quite a, a, a stack of software um, with Mathematic at the bottom, um, Celerator sort of in the middle, and um, Cellzilla spatial modeling built on top of that, and kind of an, an alternative pathway that's a little bit more general um, based on Guy Yosefon's thesis uh, that <coughs> lets you handle um, rule-based modeling in greater, in greater general, generality. So um, <clears throat> the stochastic models and uh, stochastic modeling and, and rule-based modeling has a fundamental connection to um, <clears throat> field theory approaches where you have particles interacting with one, an one another in uh, normally uh, calculated using Feynman diagrams. <clears throat> uh, and all of these diagrams correspond to things that um, could happen according to an algorithm that's literally derived from the same mathematics as the Feynman diagrams. Here's an example of this algorithm now. In the case where you have some reactions, like A plus B goes to C, that are stochastic, and other, reaction, other processes that are actually ordinary differential equations. For example, the growth of a cell. And here's the general algorithm that is in the core of our engine for handling this kind of case. <clears throat> so each, each uh, uh, possible process, each of those rules that I showed you, has a reaction rate. Uh, that's a function of the parameters of the objects that are coming in and the parameters of the objects that are going to go going to result. And <clears throat> you calculate the probability per unit time of each reaction happening. And then you get to integrate in not only, oh, I don't know what is, uh, oh, thank you. Doesn't, doesn't work when I'm, okay. So. Thank you. Um, so not only you introduce your differential equations, but also an extra differential equation that, tell, that keeps track of whether it's time for a stochastic event to happen and interrupt the ordinary differential equation solving. And if it is, you might have to make more differential equations. Uh, here's another case of uh, the, mo the growth of a root, which involves both um, uh, cell division, uh, stochastic cell division, and, and also uh, chemical reaction networks. Um, and now this is the, the green alternative uh, stack of software that I showed you with, um, <clears throat> I think I started a little late, like uh, 15 minutes late or more. <clears throat> um, so that there are uh, <clears throat> processes, in this case we have, uh, again, processes that, are, that represent, um, uh, for example, cell division and cell growth, but also differential equations freely intermixed. But you get to specify in plenum, which is this package, you get to specify what the differential equations are in uh, complete detail. And th this engine that I just showed you will simulate these kinds of things. Here's the, uh, that was the pseudocode. Here's the actual code in plenum uh, that lets you uh, simulate uh, this, this model. Another thing you can do with this kind of declarative model 
modeling language where you have arrows that take from the left-hand side to the right-hand side is you could translate between different uh, languages uh, that all have this sort of declarative characteristic. You could translate between Cellzilla and Plenum uh, or uh, between these languages and an L system, for example. Uh, by having a sort of a, a generic uh, notation that has um, features that are specific to the each, each language that you're trying to translate. And we've prototyped this use in a package called Cambium that lets you translate back and forth between Plenum and another a C++ code that was used in the plant project called Organism. And it just required changing the input format, making it a little bit general, more general for organize, Organism in order to uh, create this uh, translation. So now to describe in a, so actually now we, do we know how, how much more time there is in this talk based on 10 more minutes? Okay, great. So <clears throat> of course we want to make these models as realistic as possible and more realism is known as the, at the molecular level. So let's discuss a couple of briefly gene regulation networks and signal transduction, transduction and how these things can be modeled uh, <clears throat> in a little bit more detail. Here's that equation we use for gene regulation networks and it's based uh, and here it is appearing in uh, to reformulate a model of the end of the AP axis uh, sorry the DV dorsoventral axis in the football shaped organism uh, uh, embryo of a fruit fly <coughs> uh, so here's a mathematical output of the gene expression for the Zen gene under this model it's not our model but we reformulated it this way <coughs> these models of gene regulation are all based on um, quasi equilibrium stat mech and so um, the one I just showed you is a neural net approximation. You could instead use the actual, uh, the non-approximated version, which is a ratio of polynomials. And you could add in cis-regulatory module structure, which is impre increasingly important since uh, sequence information gives you that, uh, that information. Here's an example of a gene regulation network model that we can generate algebraically that in which each GRN mo uh, reaction is given by a ratio of polynomials. This is the famous stem cell fate determination uh, system with uh, OC, SOX, and NANOG as the three genes that are interacting to uh, uh, let a plur pluripotent stem cell adopt a more particular fate. Signaling, signaling is the process by which uh, a molecule on the outside of the cell conveys somehow some information through a chain of reactions to all the way to the inside where the gene regulation network can hear it and do some appropriate um, uh, response. For example, uh, there's signal transduction in your synapses <coughs> where you have an in influx of calcium uh, and a, 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 a complex called CAM kinase 2 that has to respond to that. And here is the plenum model for part of uh, you know, another published model that actually runs on a huge cluster uh, in, at, uh, in San Diego uh, uh, in uh, the Sanofsky lab. <laughs> and um, so you can, you can express that kind of model this way with parameterized objects and lots and lots of them. Or um, we could now try to make a reduced model by using this, um, well, I th this, uh, let me, uh, for time, skip uh, ahead a little bit. So here's the CAM kinase model again. And here's a reduced model, which gives you a probability distribution on the states of all these molecules, CAM kinase, calmodulin, and so forth. And we've got these random variables in circles connected up by how those random variables could interact. And at each moment, each of these hexagons is going to have a, a parameter that we don't know that would describe the probability distribution of that system. What we'd like to do is infer differential equations for these parameters and make a reduced model like this for that big simulation. Here's the mathematics. We have the big model. We have a reduced model. And here's the, the fitting. All of these, all of the... Uh, Bouncy parameters come from big simulation. They're the best fits of a Boltzmann distribution to the probability distribution generated in a lot of runs. And the, the red lines are the reduced model. And you can see that the differential equations are guiding the parameters of the reduced model correctly. <coughs> um, so uh, the last maybe 
point I'd like to make is all of this exists in various packages that I've advertised, including dependency diagrams was the last thing. <clears throat> and um, now a future direction, we have spatial models, but they involve discretized graphs. And we need to know, to follow the scientific trend uh, towards uh, greater detail, we need now continuum spatial models to represent biomechanics. Um, so, for example, here is a discretization of one of those very same plant images that I showed before. Uh, and to, in order to uh, escalate from the kind of um, uh, modeling language that we had before with discrete objects and ordinary differential equations, we need to go to partial differential equations. And here's the kind of rule-based syntax that I propose with a partial differential equation in it, which has to be regularized in some way uh, as the next step in this kind of language. So in summary, here's what I showed you uh, in the way of these computer algebraic biomodeling languages. Uh, there's Celerator, Cellzilla, and Plenum let you do spatial, stochastic, uh, and hybrid models. I demonstrated exam applications to gene regulation networks and plant development some solution algorithms, a model reduction algorithm, which is also implemented in Mathematica, and a future direction uh, that hopefully will mesh with uh, future directions from uh, the uh, Wolfram research as well, of adding dynamic geometries and partial differential equations. Thank you. <laughs>